Welcome to the Crucial Classics YouTube channel where we watch movies from the golden age of Hollywood together. You bring your copy and we both push play at the same time and let's just enjoy the magic of these films. The advantage of being a subscriber is you'll have the ability to watch these movies for free on the original sites that I find them on, but either way it doesn't matter because you're bringing your own copy. You'll always be able to watch along. Hi, welcome back to Crucial Classics and if this is your first time here, welcome. We start looking at the wall of my living room, and I won't be able to see this while I do it. <laughs> Once I get up too high and too far over, but we have the wall decorated like that because old movies are important for 32 years, so I live in it. Um, today's title, I just have to admit, I'm burnt out. I don't quite know what else to watch, so you know what comes to mind then of your request, and it's perfectly something to just like yeah let's watch because I've never seen it um so I know nothing about it and I don't want to look it up to know what the storyline is this is a viewer request it's a trusted viewer we all know crucial classics I have shown you guys um not the last movie because that's fun in Acapulco but the one before that Lady in Cement if we can watch Lady in Cement I can take requests okay <laughs> Uh, we watched Lady in Cement for levity and just for mindfulness, and I have a sneaking suspicion that Bo Just is nowhere along the lines of that quality of film. The reason why it was suggested by our viewer is because of the fact that it is from the year 1939, which just happens to be like that magical year in Hollywood. We've discussed, there's a whole entire documentary about 1939, and just discussing the level of quality of the movies that came out of that year. Um, this person, our viewer, also told us that it stars Gary Cooper, Ray Milland, and a young Susan Hayward. So, And then ways to watch the movie and me on one screen together is two tabs. You put me in one, the movie in another, make the movie take up more of the screen, put us both in theater mode, nice black space, connect us via an HDMI cable to your computer, or your, from your computer to your TV, boom, there you go. Or cast. And then picture in picture shrinks me down, put me in a corner of the movie, or take the movie and shrink it onto screen here with me. So that's enough said. Quick enough intro. Playing in three, two, one, click. So we're starting out at the current day. Is this universal? Intro. Yeah. Who made it, though? If it's Universal from back in the day, it'll be that little going around the world. That's it. I love their original. Okay, it was Paramount back in the day. You know, didn't Gary Cooper make quite a few films with Paramount? I wonder, was he signed to Paramount? Oh, we're getting the desert. At first I thought it was the desert, but now it's... It looked more like an open desert scene, and then it really just turned out to be sand. Starring Gary Cooper. Ray Milland. Okay, there's Susan Hayward. Who's Robert Preston? I feel like he may be a familiar looking face, right? Okay, this is a novel, based on a novel. Costumes are by Edith Head, yes. This may be the earliest movie that we saw Edith Head doing. Yay, that you know I got so excited about that. Is this, it's giving me that we are in the Middle East or something. It's an Arabian proverb, so they're letting you know that, um, bro's over. <laughs> um, this is looking like, yes, Middle East, urged on by reports of the last Arab attack, a column in command of major advance 
Passes it across the Sahara to the relief. Oh, this isn't at wartime though, right? This is in 1939, so they're just stationed here. There's possibly about to be an attack. Is that Preston? Or was it the older dude that was speaking that's Preston? I've seen both of these two guys before. So are these their people? Tor rags. Is that the enemy? What's going on? These people are Major Beaujolais. Okay, they're dead. This is like um, Cary Grant in the movie where he's doing something. Last Outpost, right? How long have they been dead? Two or three days, anyway. Huh? They they come up across a whole bunch of dead people. Okay, so these are his fellow troops that have all been killed in their fortress. But somebody just shot back at him. Somebody just shot back. You're too important. I mean, in a way that makes sense. Oh, goodness. Who, I mean, hello, who shot back at him at his feet? And this dude is just coming up in there. If they want to shoot you, they could right now. Unless there was just one survivor left. It's like on their team. Right. He got snatched up. Okay, why does the, I do question why the major needs to do it. Anybody else could do that too. At this point, it doesn't need to be our highest ranking officer also going in and getting snatched up. If the dude should have been back already, why is only one more person, the highest ranking official, going over too? Y'all need to battle ram that door open and just all go in together. This isn't very strategic. There is no reason why dude should have disappeared. Please publish, it's a confession. I get all worked up, I lose my breath to speak here. And I hereby confess that it was I who stole the great sapphire known as the blue water from Brandon Abbas. We're just into the summer months now. I'm <laughs> looking at my attire. It's hot as heck in here. Okay, that's the dude that had just gone over there. (sighs) 
I mean, this fool had better answer if he could, right? Because he's in trouble. Like, I know that if he is not incapacitated, he is in trouble that he went over into this thing and didn't report, didn't open the door. Okay, well, in five minutes, everybody was supposed to be busting in here. Why doesn't he go open the door to let all the rest of his men in here, too? Why, I do, why does he need to be doing this search and um, rescue by himself? Uh-oh. Great creepy music, dude. And so far, we haven't seen Gary Cooper or Ray Milland. Okay, so there he goes, opening the door to let everybody in. And that could have been the first thing that he did. And no sign of that dude that climbed over the wall. Is this place mystical? Like, what the heck is going on? Into the next world. Oh, I, the oasis. I was like, how far away is the oasis? Yes, this is definitely an oasis in the middle of the desert. So, um, uh, somebody shot at that man at first. A dude disappeared when he went in there. And then it started to be set on fire. So this is 15 years earlier, so we get introduced to Brandon Abbas, who is, who got his sapphires stolen. Oh, they are um, really set up to play. I mean, this is effective make-believe. <laughs> they have little um, props and stuff. I mean, where are they getting the um, explosives? Okay, is it a real... Yeah, it could... It could happen if this is a real bullet. I wouldn't bite on it. Are they really 
blasted something on this little boy. What are they pulling out of him? Shrapnel? Is that him? Well, they're just make believing. When children are up to a certain age, they can really do this. Okay, so they got a little dog. That is supposed to be now him shrunken down. Why? He didn't die, so, but that's him as a Viking going to be buried. I thought he just survived and got promoted. <laughs> what is going on? Well, yeah, somebody didn't make it, and they're just going to burn up. Is their little play bowl going to burn up in the water? Oh, my gosh. So, no, that's what they see, right, in their little mind's eye. Is it him? Make believe on the boat. Okay, we kind of need to move this along now, though, because, um... You know, I can't. Not there with them. Oh, Bo. Oh, so they're not going to say that he got hurt. Bow. Well, these kids back in the day were told to go outside and play. And they supplied them to be able to do that. So they're doing... Um, work as well as the Foreign Legion.
so it's Sir Hector's sapphire, but she's just showing people. It's, it's not hers, right? She said it's Sir Hector's, and he's just left his little nephew with her for the time being. Oh, she just opens up the safe, and she got the key. This is not her sapphire, right? She married Sir Hector, right? Wow. Okay, um, who is she to Sir Hector? And she said she's desperate about being able to raise these kids, just period. But if she was married to Sir Hector, is, I mean, is that her situation? Okay, so he's both just... Aunt Cat, okay. So, she must be married to... It's going to be way too heavy for him, huh? <laughs> oh, you know who this girl is? Um, she's in all of this in heaven, too. She's the tell us about Prella. She's that little bitch in the beginning of the movie that doesn't want to have anything to do with Betty Davis wants to make her have to explain her life story. Oh. Who is this coming in with her? He is somebody not local, right? He's from where they were. Yeah, with who? Aunt Pat, Hector, would be crazy to come back. He is gambling away the fortune. The only thing left is the, whatever, the sapphire. Did she just sell it? She's desperate to keep these kids. She's got all of this, but it seems like that fool is out and about squandering away the fortune. And she needs the 30,000 pounds that that sapphire was worth. Okay, I mean... I think I'm gonna be able to move in that, right? Like, is he gonna start walking in this thing? They have to get him out of it, right? Yeah, what did he say? Yeah.
Susan Hayward. Oh, okay. Um, she is very young. I didn't recognize her. She's so beautiful. Wow. <laughs> she was a model. In Brooklyn. Oh, Isabel is just her charge. They're not, I'm like, okay, no, it's not like that. She's adopted or whatever, her charge. And those are her nephews. I don't, I still don't understand what the heck was the premise of how she's in custody of them. There's one more dude still, too, right? Oh, did, did, does he need this to get him out of something? trying to get ew wet ew wet gross it doesn't require these instruments they have right I mean that's the dude that disappeared right? we know that They're underneath that couch. <laughs> Gross, no. So he just has a domain of the room then? You're just gonna let him uncle, whatever that fool's name was that yeah Sir Hector <sighs> where's Raymond? Oh, he's over by Susan Hayward. I sure already read it. Have they ever met him? It seems. Yeah. 
Well, she raised them up. They're all grown, huh? Before she goes, where is she going? Oh, she's just going to go get it and bring it to them. They don't get to go in that room and see it. Okay, so she went and got it. Is it not going to be there? Oh no, it's got to be there. This thing is mystical. Turn it, yeah, okay. It was about him. And it won't be there. <laughs> Who's turning the lights back on? I don't want a scandal in Brandon Abbas. So the place that they live is Brandon Abbas. Hector is their benefactor. Brandon Abbas. Her deep voice is, she's so pretty. What, they're gonna like gang up on him? Turn him upside down by his heels? Sh shake him out? That little punk wouldn't have took it. He'd be, he's too much of a little tattletale. He, when they were all standing right there at the table. Like, none of them stepped away. Yeah, oh, ow, I do, down. has it then um, Sir Hector isn't coming home just to sell it so Bo hasn't said it again It 
is gonna get cheese. Oh, he is the oldest, huh? Well, we've already seen supernatural things happening in this movie. Because, I mean, they were all at the table, then the lights went out. Who stepped away to turn out the light? Look, by taking that thing, they're just ensuring that this fool Hector, who don't seem to do anything but gamble everything away, isn't coming in for the final little bit of their um, money to come and sell it. Oh, because he's coming home. He don't ever come home except when he needs money. He never needs money at this time of the year. That's why he's coming. We still haven't seen him. And all he's coming home for this final time is to sell the thing that they all are dependent on. The blue water and my blue eyes go so well together that I couldn't resist. Bo, yeah, taking it. I have no intention of sharing the loot, so don't follow me. <laughs> Bo! He has no intention of sharing the loot. Well, are they all okay? Mr. Digby is, so Bo is Digby. Oh, I don't get to see it. Oh, this is a good movie. I definitely needed a have not ever seen it title to watch. Oh, Digby was the other one. He's going to marry her. <clears throat> oh, he's going away. And now he's leaving. that people need to realize that you don't just recycle love like that are they engaged She is so beautiful, my goodness. Uh, oh, okay, this is like their little basic training place that they ship to. Oh, they found each other. The Middle East from. Is, is here coming Ray Milan now to join up with them too? Isn't that him? Y'all are in the 
the military. Is he not going to be able to ship with them? Something is telling me it's not as easy as, like, oh, look, he's coming right over to him. and everything. I was just seeing him in All the King's Men. What's his name? Broderick Crawford. Well, are they all accepted or not? Dude, not the one dude. So somebody barked him over there. Well, he seems younger than that dude. I don't know that that works. Okay, so he's a madman, and I don't, somehow I don't think that he's going to let that younger dude, even though he is his superior officer, actually have any say on how he's handling these people. Okay, so does he get to see his brothers? He wouldn't do that. I have never heard a part of this movie existing. It's a very unique story. <laughs> I got the impression.
mentioned they were over in Europe. Why is Broderick Crawford straight up wearing his Spurs cowboy? <laughs> he wouldn't be dressed like that in Europe, right? The Foreign Legion and stuff, that's not here in the United States, right? Oh, they're very late getting back. They don't get in trouble for rolling in all late like this? If they disturb somebody, huh? Nobody's gonna tell on them though, right? But they gotta discuss who has the sapphire. If any of them actually have it. Oh, I just heard them say jewel thieves. Why is this dude there, like, independently on his own? What's his journey that he signed up for this organization? Well, they're not talking, right? They're trying to go to sleep. He sees this fool creeping around trying to stare at them. Oh, okay. Uh, he is not sharing any of it with them. Sounds like they were splitting it up anyway. Okay, dude, you just heard brothers talking crap to each other. What is he needing to run off for? Another night, a month later, a fourth jewel thief uninvited. their stuff. They were trying to tell this fool he's not invited to be drinking with them. And then he is an actual little jewel thief. A thief himself. Oh, he's waiting until everybody's asleep and he's coming to dig through their stuff. Because he heard it's worth $30,000 and they could go to the South Seas. <gasps> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna be up on me 
in my sleep that close, dude, without it being on. Why is he still rolling around? <laughs> Just stop. You got busted. What are you still fighting for? be handled <laughs> What in the world does that mean? Okay, they are Americans. corruption right so this is now where we started Oh, I thought he might have been the only one. So this is the corrupt dude. Splitting them up. Borgo Dallas, take charge.
Because Diggs is the one that went over the wall and disappeared. And it, that's where the note was found by Burger Dallas confessing that he stole it from Brandon Abbas. Right, and that is the group that we saw was with Diggs. We didn't see what happened to Miland and Gary Cooper. Because they were going someplace totally else, right? This is a little mystery. Yeah, that's what I'm definitely getting out of this. It's a little mystical mystery. Yeah, these brothers got separated. Months later. Oh, okay, this is where it started, right? That fortress? Yeah, we saw this. When Borgodales, what kind of a name? Borgodales was looking by himself. Right, right, right. Okay, that's where the two brothers went because then later their other brother came and went over the wall. Okay. stupid like that to each other like they're gonna mess each other up oh this little crazy thief they care they take care of him it's his problem twisted up in bed Is this the thief man? Maybe that was it. Yeah, you know, that was called for, fool, because you don't just be, um, he said he was going to kill that man. Oh, yeah, no, the man in the bed is not the little thief. Barely, dude. So, what is the matter with this man? Mm, 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 okay. He's gonna do whatever he wants to do. And they had some deserters that he's gonna make an example of. Okay, so this is a little fortress that's just good to go. And we see they were all dead. Why'd they desert?
Oh, well, he was told to, um, put them in the jail, not drive them out. And his superior officer told him that if he didn't remember that he's not in charge, he would be in the jail with those two. that they would go out into the Sahara Desert instead of staying here doing their job. The heck? Well, okay. Does his superior officer die? Okay. He better not kill him. He better, he, I know he doesn't go like this on the Is he, is he dead? He just died. Pure evil. I mean, why did he tell these men that they were going to wish they went out into the Sahara Desert? Okay. Because he got kicked out of the Siberian tundra army. And they said they're glad their brother isn't there. This full standing out is from the killers. Huh? He's Colfax. Okay. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> that's fair enough. Okay.
Well, that's cool. I love the integrity. Yeah, because that is what they're doing. I mean, he's got logic about Markov, but they're all being traitors. These are not good men. Because it's like, well, why are you guys in this thing if you don't have the slightest problem about deserting? Okay. Raymond. Um, you need to have more of a plan than it's all, everything is up to your brother. Oh, who is this? That one little short dude that said he was going to go tell the guards? Yeah, look. This movie is a trip, dude. Alright, well, he's gone now. Boy, people just be hollering out. It's their final moment. Seem like they got this fever or something. Okay, so is all of this a test? by Markov to see who's loyal because their names were told to him that they are the only three that are loyal along with this Judas he sure did want to make sure that they waited until the morning huh and this dude This is still about the jewel. The jewel got real forgotten. This is a trip of a movie, dude. This is a really good movie. No way to tell what's happening next. straight in here where all of these fools are.
That's interesting that they're doing this because they didn't really want to stay reporting to Markov. They just weren't deserting the whole entire outfit. Okay, so they are just removing all of the weapons. these rifles too though dude I mean I had to become Princess Leia really quick it's too effing hot okay I mean because look okay they all still have a gun and this fool's talking shit to them about he's gonna kill them I'm like fool what if I shoot you before you could shoot me you're just gonna be threatening my life cause you're my superior officer is going down all the guns are gone oh he ain't giving them no trial huh? <laughs> so the reason why they were found all dead is because they do that to each other Cooper and Ray Melandis, they're not going to shoot them. Okay. He's going to say, and so you guys shoot them. aren't going to do it, right? Right. No. No. Yeah, well, because um, you're in no way the material to be one. the perfect timing oh so they actually are getting attacked too what a hot mess there's no camaraderie among this um, but now is each man for himself life is himself oh good gosh the drama uh, the stress and the drama they're gonna be taking a 
out orders from this Markov fool. Like, look, I would be on my own. I will be just knowing that we are getting attacked right now. And I ain't gonna do nothing that Markov says to do. We're getting ready to kill all of them. So those fools were locked up. Who are they? They're dressed differently. They look like locals that are the lookout or whatever. This doesn't explain why all of them would be dead on the inside of that like they were though. The bugler has to do what? Oh, did he say like put up, hoist the colors like they do in um, Pirates of the Caribbean? Hoist the colors! Nobody else is really as excited about this as you are. Why are they all running away? It is not because of the fire they're receiving here, is it? Yeah, they're not even, they don't have their um, shoes on them. Markov, I think you're going to be lucky now that your men are all armed again to not get it yourself up in this fortress. Friendly fireful. Oh, now they're dressed. Okay, that's the way they're supposed to be dressed because there was only a few of them that were dressed like that. That got let out of that little prison in there, their little jail. gotta be hot as hell in the Sahara Desert wearing this black absorbing the equatorial sun the hell is this their um, uniform for me Oh, he's telling him he might be able to see the route to Morocco. <laughs> so what does he do? Oh, he's got to go up high and be the lookout. He's going to be the main person. Keeping a weather eye on the horizon. <laughs> but what, was he given a task to do up there? So because he's up high like that, he'll get shot if they come back. <clears throat> Sound the alarm for what? Well, like I think that everybody that's in there right now understood that they're back. What's this alarm for? So they're coming back not on their horses this time, or their camels. Oh, they are starting to lose. 
I mean, do they all get shot though? I can see that they need that horn. Okay, they're just happy to still keep seeing each other. What's he gonna do? Make some type of a point with this dude's dead body? This is what happens to mutineers. Uh, it's not... That dude from the lookout. I mean, strategically, you get his point. They don't really have reinforcements coming. Oh, come on, dude. And he's just happy. true story or something? I mean, it's a novel. Why are they attacking this fortress, dude? I mean, they just don't want them there, right? They come and go, come and go. Sound the ceasefire. <laughs> oh, is his brother hit? He told him that he would shoot him if he left his position. 
again. So he does that all by himself. Nobody else... Uncouth. Oh, do they give, they gave fake names to not be known as brothers? Is he gonna shoot him? I mean, this dude is so sick. Were they already sending for help? their troops? Of course, right? They sure hope. Just tell Isabel. <laughs> this movie is just like Gangadeen. It is really good from 1939. Let's get some rest for like, what, two minutes? A definite cat nap. Why are you looking at your brother like that? They're not supposed to be getting rest. They're not allowed to be down there that long, right? I thought he said 10 minutes.
well, yeah, because it's the last of you guys. I thought that dude sitting down was him. No. He's gonna get shot, huh? What did he just tell them to like run around and shoot from different spots? Jeez, at a certain point, it's going to be Meland and Gary Cooper left. That was Gary Cooper that fell down. When he fell down, he didn't look as tall as he is. Is it finally the reinforcements? Yeah, I mean, it's like those two left. His brother is going to be one of the ones he puts up there. Oh. He'll do it, huh? He'll say he'll do it. No, he ain't going to do that. Okay, and he means that, Paul. Paul, go get your own damn bread and wine. He ain't doing it. Why is Gary Cooper opening his eyes? Um, he knows that his brother had that 
Joel. And, well, I guess he didn't so much hear Markov talking crap to him about does he have the jewel. That's all he's doing is searching him for this jewel. Land, why did you walk away from your brother? So this is a very, 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 very good movie. My goodness. Now, Ray Milan, where do you go? What? He's going to Egypt. He just gets out of here and they don't see him? Making tracks through the Sahara Desert off to Egypt? Oh, He's got the jewel. Where are you going, Ringland? How do you get out of here and they don't see you? He's deserted now, right? Like, he's just out of the Foreign Legion. He's getting food and water. That's great thinking ahead. Okay, he's going back up there, right? Hey, and they didn't find him either. And this movie's got to almost be over, too. <gasps> but he'll see his brother, okay? So now here's the superior officer coming up. No, I was like, that's not him. 
Oh, he's playing dead. <gasps> Why did he do that? Why did he start playing dead? Okay, and this is Bo Jorlalis or whatever his name is. So he totally understood that that's Bo Jest. And when it said Brandon, whatever, he knows that that's their estate. Why'd you play dead, dude? Is that Diggs, right? Digsby? What's he? He's taking his brother's body? He knew he didn't see his other brother, huh? And then also somehow this thing caught on fire. This dude's about to pass. I mean, he just was carrying Gary Cooper on his back with his hot ass uniform on in the sun. What is going on? The bugler is dead, dude. Like, why are you um, calling so hard for him? I am melting with how hot it is in this house right now. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I put his brother in the bed. I mean, this work right here in the sun, in this uniform, carrying folks. This is a strong man. Who in the world is that that he's carrying right there? Oh, Markov. Why is he, um, doing the ceremony for his brother? Um, it's just interesting. With Markov at his feet, you know what I mean? It's like he's needing to account for something. He didn't, um, see any of these letters.
So he's muffling that none of these guys outside hear this. Why are these two, um, is this just the end of the movie? Okay, I know. Why are they, um, deserted? Oh, okay. They need the water. Okay. I mean, are we going to see these dudes get all the way back to France? Is that where they're from? Um. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Can you get down and do your bugle? I mean, they're not returning fire. But, oh, come on, come on. What a cool shot. Mm -mm. He made it 
back to Brandon. Abbas is a Lady Brandon, okay, his aunt. love the way that he said uh, married of course and that is absolutely right uh... he's got the stone Perfect bow, just gallant gesture that makes sense for the line in the next movie that we're going to watch. I told you that there is a movie that has, oh, it's just a bow jest, a grand gesture a Viking's death with a dog at his feet. That was... Oh my goodness. What a trip of a movie, dude. This is a very unique story. I've never seen nothing like this. Yes! <laughs> okay. Like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.